Hello everybody, welcome back to another video on the channel, and in today's video, I have a training point guide for y'all. This will be going over everything from level 1 all the way to 170. The goal of this video is to try and help newer players get into the game and spend their points on things they're going to need long term, and things that are just helpful in general. So I think the best way to do this is simply by starting within Wizard City itself, and then going world by world and covering the spells that are there in each world right off the bat at level one you can get infection which is really really good to have in pvp especially at the lower level leagues if you are struggling against a certain fight or anything like that you could go to the fairgrounds right here and actually train a minus 80 shield to that school or you could go to uh, one of the school trainers and learn a set shield to two schools which is also pretty good Alrighty, so next up we are in Crocotopia. Now we have a couple of spells here. There are some like minion spells you could train here. I recommend not getting them though. They're like really, really bad. Same thing with Marlebone and the next world. What you're gonna want to get from Crocotopia though, guys, is gonna be over here at the Crocosphinx. Basically the ice area, the second big milestone in Crocotopia. And you're gonna want to talk to Niles. Now, Niles is gonna offer you four things he'll have spirit trap and elemental trap and the same thing with the blades now generally i would recommend honestly training both of these because one is going to help you for your school unless you're a balance but most of the game these will help you and training the other one that is not for your school is still pretty helpful right because wiz is a game where you might have teammates and you might want to buff up the other guy who might be a higher level or might have better stats than you so generally early on in the game in crocotopia and stuff like that i would definitely recommend training elemental blade and getting spirit blade as well you could get elemental trap or spirit trap personally i never ever did this even when i was a noob and still to this day i don't really get it unless i need it for like a very specific like advanced content fight or something like that at this point in the game as well you can train spells like weakness and you can also train spells like tower shield because you'll probably be like level 20 or 25 by the time you're done krakatopia so i'd recommend getting a spell that can debuff so either weakness or tower shield i think it's time you're gonna backtrack to ravenwood and train one of the most important spells in the game realistically you have two options one is you can get faint from the death school this spell is just like incredible it's so good on every single school like this is a, a must have no matter what you are like a storm or like a balance or a life support or if you want to you know not be so buff heavy you could invest into satyr as well Right, Seder is pretty good early on in the game, and I know personally I use Seder quite a bit as a newer player. If you guys are going to use Seder or whatever, be sure you go to your spell book and then you go down here and click on a life pip. This will basically allow you to have like uh, a life mastery pretty much if you have two life pips, that's like equivalent to a life mastery, which will be more efficient. So, just a little recap we would be level 50 going into Celestia, so. You should have probably like a tower shield or a weakness, ideally tower shield, I'd recommend uh, either a satyr or a faint trained at this point. And then also having spells like elemental blade and maybe a set shield or two to a school you might struggle up against in PvE. Celestia actually has a lot of content in terms of spells. Now you have sun, moon, and star, I believe. Now, the most useless one is Moon. Moon was really cool. Like, when I was a kid and stuff like that, I had a lot of fun with Polymorph. But, unfortunately, these artists kind of, you know, got outdated, left in the dust, you know. Uh, they just really don't help you at all. But, more importantly, what you're going to want to do is look at Star and Sun. Now, Star is the one that gives you auras. Now, auras are basically like global effects kind of like a bubble i'd recommend getting amplified just as like another zero pip good buff that can stack you could get fortify it's not bad as well next up we have the sun school now sun school is where you start to learn damage and accuracy and chance now accuracy and chance were a pretty cool idea but 
a lot like the moon school they kind of got left behind and there's not really any value into getting them but you are 1 billion percent going to want to invest into getting these damage enchants right here. So you can go ahead and train the first two right here in the Celestia base camp, Giant and Strong. And then once you actually progress a little bit through the world, you're going to want to head to Floating Lands over here. And then you can actually train up a little bit more. I believe it is Monstrous and Gargantuan, if my memory uh, recalls correctly. It's been a little while. I haven't had to quest anybody in like about close to three years now, actually. So it's been a little while. Yes, yeah, so we have Monstrous and then we have Gargantuan here as well. So go ahead and get those really, really good spells. They will make your life one million percent easier. Uh, if you do not get these, you're basically just playing the game on a hard mode. And hey, man, if that's your thing, you do you. But definitely get the enchants for damage if you want to quest fast, efficiently. Okay, so now in Safara, there's two areas you're going to want to look for here. And that's going to be the star and the sun, because those are obviously the only useful ones. So the star one, I believe, is in Zamunda. So you're going to go ahead and work your way to Zamunda through the outskirts here. Now, once you're in Zamunda, you're going to want to take a left and find this sun or sorry, star school trainer right here. It's kind of hard to miss, but uh, I think you have to do a side quest somewhere around this area to actually unlock it. So do keep that in mind. Uh, there's not a lot of side quests here, so and it's not that difficult. So be sure you do the side to get this unlocked and then you can actually train Berserk, which is a little bit better than Amplify. There is a trade-off to this one though, unlike Amplify, but still it is like a 20% 20, 20 extra buff, which is not bad. Also, you're going to need this card later on in the game to get one of the best PvE spells in the game, which I'll talk about a bit later when we get to that point. Next up, you're going to want to make your way to the Drum Jungle, I believe. So take the teleporter right here. Very nice that they added the teleporters, or else you'd have to spend five minutes walking to this area. So, uh, yeah, that is a thing. So, yeah, go there, and then you're actually going to backtrack your way a little bit towards the stone town here. And you'll actually see an obelisk, like the star one we just saw in Zamunda there. And this one will give you the sun enchant upgrade. So, yeah, right here looks pretty freaking cool. We're gonna go ahead and train Colossal. And one thing about the, you know, auras and the enchants here, guys, is you have to be sure you train the lowest rank one first and then work your way up to the big ones. I believe next up we have Azteca. Now in Azteca, we have Sharpened Blade and Potent Trap. Now, these are like some of the biggest staples in the game. And you're gonna use these until the dawn of time, until King's Isle either like audits them or just takes them out of the game completely. So when you head over to Azteca, you're essentially going to have to do some quests that you unlock it, I think 82, 84, and 86. These side quests can be obtained in the main area, the Zorkolo. Then once you complete them, you will be able to basically access these obelisks that will actually give you the sharpened blade and the potent strap that you want from here. Also, at this point of the game, you can learn spells like Galvanic Field and stuff like that, which you can also get from the Arcanum as well. So I'd recommend getting the aura for your school. So like if I'm on an ice, for example, I'm going to go ahead and get Sleet Storm. You can do this in Azteca. I just don't have a membership right now, so I can't show you guys the gameplay of... Whoa, I don't want to go in there of that but definitely go ahead and get the aura for your school along with the sharpened blade and along with the potent shop there in azteca then after azteca you could go to chrysalis i suppose and learn a shift spell or like a dark nova kind of spell Although, you could get, you know, shadow stuff right here in the Arcanum as well. If King Saw can ever make, like, a moon school pip or something like that, kind of like how Arch Mastery works right now in-game, I could definitely see those moon school spells in Chrysalis being used and maybe even being meta in, like, PvP. But for now, I'd recommend not getting them. 
And in terms of shads and stuff like that, what is what you can learn in Chrysalis or in Arcanum. I think every school should get Strike. It's really good for PvP, uh, even advanced content as well. And also like PvE, it's just really good to like get around a tower shield or a cheating boss that may double shield and have a brace. Also, Dark Surge is incredibly good in PvP. It's part of the meta right now. And in PvE as well, it's just really handy. Uh, in PvE though, I'd say you're probably just better off going for like your whatever AoE shad you have, but if you don't want to do that, Dark Surge is also a pretty good option to do. And that leads us back to the Arcanum, which is basically where I've been at this entire time, and I've been yapping. So this basically is going to be marking the end of our journey, I believe, if I recall correctly. I don't think there's anything after like level 110 in terms of spells, training points that uh, you can get that are like deemed useful or anything like that so this guy will be the last guy to help you and stuff like that so you're gonna want to get epic right here which is only obtainable if you have colossal like i said you have to get all of the new ones first so go ahead and get epic and also you'll see this card called frenzy now this is a lot like the berserk card we got in safara but the difference is this one actually helps you more. Also, Aegis and Indemnity are pretty good for PvE as well, and a couple of cheating bosses in the game might require them for a specific kind of strat. If you are a life wizard or you really like to heal, you could definitely pick up this spell right here, which basically enchants a heal. And yeah, I think that's pretty much it for the video. That's everything important and mandatory. Pretty much covered everything in my video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you found it useful. If you made it this far, leave a like and a sub. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions, I will try to answer them all to the best of my ability in the comments below. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching, guys. And I'll see you on the next one. Take care.